Hey, what's up everybody? It's Space Mike here, and I am super excited about the news I got this morning that China landed a rover on the far side of the moon last night. This is amazing! This year has certainly gotten off to a great start when it comes to space flight. I mean, New Horizons flew by Ultima Thule, OSIRIS-REx went into orbit around asteroid Bennu, and now China's Chang'e 4 mission has landed on the moon. Chang'e 4 is actually a spare for the Chang'e 3 mission that China landed on the moon in 2013. But this mission, Chang'e 4, has different scientific instruments and is the first object ever to land on the far side of the moon, specifically in the von Karman crater in the South Pole Aitken Basin. China has a space first now that hasn't been done before by the United States or Russia. This is pretty cool. The landing officially occurred on January 3rd, 2019 at 2.26 Coordinated Universal Time, and nobody really knew when this landing was going to happen, but I'm glad that it happened now. Let me explain. The Chang'e 4 lander and rover were launched on December 8th, and they've been in orbit around the moon since December 12th. The Chinese could have attempted the landing at any time, but the reason that they waited was so that the landing site would be illuminated by the sun and wouldn't be in the long dark of a lunar night. A lunar night lasts about two weeks, since it takes a little over 29 Earth days for the moon to rotate on its axis and complete one lunar day. So if China didn't land the rover now, they would have had to wait almost a month for similar conditions. This is important because not only do they want their pics to look great with proper lighting, <laughs> but the rover is mostly solar powered and they wanted to start driving that thing right away. The rover is called U2-2, the second U2 rover, and U2 means moon rabbit in Mandarin. And this rover doesn't exist just to give China bragging rights, it's going to conduct real science that will be shared with the rest of the world. The von Karman crater in the South Pole Aitken Basin could contain exposed material from the moon's upper mantle and could contain clues to the history and development of the solar system. Luckily, the science experiments on this mission were either supplied or jointly made with the Europeans, so the data is going to be shared worldwide. The data will include results from instruments measuring radiation in the lunar soil, radar looking at surface layers and hopefully subsurface lava tubes, and a few types of spectrometers that will analyze mineral compositions and radio frequencies. But probably the coolest experiment in my mind is actually a biosphere that has potato seeds, some silkworm larvae, and something called Arabidopsis, which is also known as Thalecress, which is basically a weed that grows on the side of the road. But the experiment's going to be a pioneering first. It's going to be testing photosynthesis and respiration in one one-sixth Earth gravity in the lunar gravity environment. There are silkworms on the moon right now, everybody. That's crazy! I also think that it's pretty cool that even on a mission like this, it has experiments that are for future human spaceflight, like China's plans to build a human-tended base on the moon. I just think that's incredible. Something else about this mission is China had to launch a relay satellite so that the rover and lander could stay in contact with ground stations on Earth because it's always on the far side of the moon. We don't have any direct line of sight with that. The relay satellite is called Hukou, and when it launched last year, it carried two microsatellites along with it called Longjiang-1 and Longjiang-2 that were testing communications and also were taking pictures. Longjiang-1 failed, but the second satellite returned these awesome photos of the Earth and Moon for a modern Earthrise photo. You know, it's just too bad though that the cell phone was oriented vertically instead of horizontally. That's okay though, still really cool pictures. <laughs> In any case, this mission so far is going great, and I'm sure that the data from this mission is going to further illuminate our understanding of our moon, Luna. Man, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the moon a lot. India is going to be launching their own lunar lander and rover called Chandrayaan-2 at the end of this month in January. 
And then next month in February, Space IL, the Israeli team who competed in the Google Lunar X Prize, they're going to be launching their lunar lander on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. We're going to see a lot of activity around and about the moon this year, as the space agencies all around Earth finalize and adjust their plans to explore the moon and return humans to its surface. Man, I can't wait to see what else happens this year with everything else related to space flight and space exploration. So much crazy stuff is happening and is in the works. It sure is one hell of a time to be alive. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about the Chang'e 4 mission in the comments below. And now that it's 2019, let me know what you're looking forward to the most in space this year. Oh man, I'm so excited. Don't forget though to like this video and subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you'd like to help me make more videos, you can support me at patreon.com slash spacemike. But sharing this video with your friends also helps a lot. Also, for those of you that don't know, I've created a new YouTube channel where I'll be uploading most of my videos from now on. YouTube.com slash SpaceMike. So please subscribe to my new channel and catch up on all the videos that I've been making over the past couple of months. Again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time I see you guys, keep on moving onwards and upwards and don't forget, Ad Astra, to the stars.